Hey, hi everyone. <laughs> oh my it's our goodness. First live. This is our first live broadcast. Yay. Like really live. Super <laughs> live, so live that we're live live right now. So we just posted on our personal pages. So if you'd like to come join us, um, we are going to be talking about paying attention. Uh, my name is Jennifer Escalera. I have a private practice in Pasadena, California, and I specialize in stress management and helping women um, build their self-love and intuition so that they can better their lives and relationships. And Greg, who are you? Uh, <laughs> Greg Beckett. <laughs> I'm in LA, Hollywood, actually. Um, I have a practice here. I'm a motivational hypnotist. Um, I help people get unstuck. It seems to be my theme. Uh, you know, we, we all get stuck in so many different places in our lives and sometimes we just need a little jostling or maybe even going back in time, so to speak, uh, to find out where it started and to let it go and to move forward in our lives. So I do a lot of that, a lot of motivation. Um, I work a lot with a book called the four agreements in my practice with others. And I also do some past life regression and I train, others to be hypnotists. I certify people to become hypnotists. So thank you guys for tuning in. And I'm excited that we're going to talk about paying attention. And um, yeah. yay, I don't want to. So this is our first time. This is, can I call it what we were going to call it, Jennifer? <laughs> Go for it. Because I thought that's what we were going to call it. Yeah. From now. So, soulful nooner. <laughs> <laughs> So it's taking a break it. in the middle of a Monday, lunchtime or whatever you're doing, and it's a soulful nooner, uh, taking care of oneself. <laughs> <laughs> Paying attention to oneself. So uh, you want me to go? You want to go? How do you want to do this, Jennifer? Well, just really quick, um, the reason why we're here um, was Greg and I, last year, we did some classes on... Uh, the four agreements and we talked about you know how to apply those agreements in your life and to make your life easier and better and um, after that we wanted to continue doing this and and reaching as many people as we could and for myself I'm just gonna speak really quick um, I wanted to do these live and to continue these broadcasts because I have been such an intent. This is my time to shine. So I really want to challenge and stretch myself this year to be more um, open to the public, be more open live and to stretch my vulnerability. And so one of my intentions for doing these is to to show people that even when you're afraid of doing something, just go for it. Just keep challenging yourself. And that's when really inspiration and your your divine purpose will really show, uh, will show up or show um, what you need to know. So that's on my end. I don't All know right. if you want to say. Yeah, I'll say so. Mine's going to be pretty brief is that, much like uh, Jennifer, I continue to challenge myself. I have things that I'm afraid of. I think that's part of our evolution is our fears bring things to us and our challenge is to either go through them or to be stuck with them. And so, and that's part of what we're going to talk about with paying attention. So for me, it's, I want to be f with you. I want to show you, show my clients, everybody that we, we work together to improve and to grow and going through these things make me better as a person and as a motivational hypnotist to help you guys. And uh, I'm going to jump already into our topic about paying attention, but I want to read a quote real quick that I really like, and it's learning is finding out what you already know. Doing is demonstrating that you know it and teaching is reminding others that they know it as well as you do. We're all learners, doers and teachers and that's by richard david bach and i just feel like anything i'm not saying anything new i don't know how much new there is i mean even science today is 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 now confirming so many things that our ancestors were doing 
for our souls and for our brains and our bodies and our minds. And now we're saying, oh, yeah, it's true because science now has met machines to confirm it. But yet I think in our interior, in our soul, in our core, whatever word you want to use, you know, um, we already know these things and we help each other bring these things out. And what's important is getting to our subject is paying attention to this. And mm -hmm. understanding that we do have this to listen to ourselves, even when a client comes to me and I can only talk to me about my, my practice, Jen has her way, um, is that I'm reminding them that they have these things within themselves and it's time to pay attention to yourself. So Jen, I'm going to, you either jump in or I'm going to just wind off into all of this because I have so much to say. <laughs> Oh, talking about paying attention, I was looking to see, so we had one watcher, and I was looking to see who it was, uh -huh. and it's Patty, but I think she just got off right now. That's okay. I, this this is going to be not, <laughs> you weren't paying attention to me? <laughs> I was paying attention, but oh, I don't know, Patty, I don't know if you... Uh, That's all right. People are going to come off and on, and it'll be fun. Um, um this is our first time doing it, so if you are joining us, this is something new Comment during this discussion. Oh, okay, good. She's back. Okay, yeah. great. Um, please comment and let us know how we're doing or if you have a question. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. Really okay, so I want to go to paying attention to the beginning of it. Okay. When, when we were growing up, we were told, pay attention. Pay attention to your teacher. Pay attention to your minister or priest, pay attention to your mom, your dad, your aunt, your grandmother, your sister, pay attention to everything that's going on around you. And the interesting thing is what we don't realize is paying attention. Our attention is really our only commodity in this world. That's what we pay with, literally, and get paid for, literally. When your, your job at your work is you may have skills and it's to put your skills to the attention of what they need at your job. You're being paid for your attention. So what we pay attention to is what grows or causes what grows. <laughs> I was gonna say, or what causes fear. It's not what causes fear, it's what, if we're afraid of something, we pay attention to it, it's gonna make it larger. If we like somebody and we pay attention to it, it grows that relationship. It's, it's what we have and what we were told about what to pay attention to may not be what we want to pay attention to. Right, we were right. instructed. And now as just a habit, we pay attention to these things. What about paying attention to ourselves to find out who we really are? Like um, let's say you were, gr you were growing up and they said, you're going to be a lawyer. I'm just using this as a blanket example. And you just went that way because that's what you're told who you are. You're going to be a lawyer. You're going to be a lawyer. When I was a kid, you know, I grew up Catholic. And right. I just was based off of my religious beliefs as a Catholic, um, how to pray, how to um, have certain values. But it wasn't until I moved away and went to college and just kind of started learning about different other religions or other ways to find out about God or what God is for you. Um, right. For me. Right. And it was, it was through that personal self awareness that I was paying attention, not just what I was raised with. Right. So you had to pay attention to your feelings and what felt right and didn't feel right or what was growth for you or not for you to find out who you are. Right. Yeah. Because, I knew that there were different cultures, and so what what was it about other cultures that were using different religions or different practices to heal or to understand about life? And I just knew that Catholicism wasn't my only way, but it was a great uh, starter. <laughs> a starter, a primer. <laughs> it was and a that's starter. Great. <laughs> the primer. The interesting thing, though, is is that a lot of people, including myself, we get to a certain age and all of those things that we were told to pay attention to and just learn because we were told to is the tools that we had to move on in this world to deal with having kids or being in relationships or jobs and stuff, and they don't work anymore. And so 
that's where it's time to start paying attention to yourself or to reach mm -hmm. out to some other people that maybe have growth in that area to help you learn to pay attention to what you need and who you are on your own, not what they've told you to be. So back to the story a little bit about the lawyer, you become a lawyer or they, they see you as a lawyer and you're feeling like you want to be an artist, dun, 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 an artist, you know, and they want you to be a lawyer. So there's this, this whole internal struggle of how they see you, you not wanting to disappoint them and who you want to be paying attention to yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a huge thing. And then we come to those crossroads, whether it's with family or whatever the situation that we have to pay attention to ourselves. Yeah. And where do you want to go? And we get so caught up with our, Oh, let me pick one up here. Let me also, while I'm on here, it's a, it's an iPhone, you know, Oh, we're on this or, Oh, that, or the next best thing. And we don't take even a moment to get to pay ourselves, to pay ourselves with our own attention. Mm hmm. I, I see. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> what comes to mind, uh, paying attention is uh, how I see it as listening to your inner wisdom, kind of like what you're talking about with what our ancestors um, have taught us um, about things um, from from their time. And Absolutely. I don't know where I was going with this, but, um, well, th but think but about I, this. I think it's important to follow your intuition or your inner guidance so that you are paying attention to the right things or things that are good for you and have direction. You know, you can't navigate life without any direction. So I, I feel like paying attention for me means listening to my intuition. Right. And also the things that surround you that are of life-giving force, it could be positive or negative. And without putting judgment on the words positive or negative, paying attention to the signs of, okay, you go to work every day and you're miserable, but you, you just know you're unhappy. Why? It could be as simple as you're not getting enough sunshine, or it could be that the environment is toxic. So you now need to pay attention to an, how you can move out of it to give you that movement. So like some people come and they gain weight when they're in a bad environment and they want to go and lose weight. And that's great, but they're not realizing that they're gaining it because they're unhappy. Right? Mm -hmm. So we need to work on how to become happy and the weight drops off along with some exercise because you change your eating habits when you're happy, when you yeah. think you're worthy and you're paying attention to yourself. Mm-hmm. A lot of times when there's a lot of sadness or or that stuck feeling, it's about having fear and not moving through something. But what is it that you're so fearful of and then you can work with by paying attention? It's like, I think I said something to you the other day, Jennifer, is at what cost to ourselves do we not pay attention? How are we not? It, there's a, a theory and there's a, 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 there's a book, it's called uh, The Richest Man in Babylon. And it's about tithing and, and getting out of uh, debt. And it's a really great book. And it's in parable form. And they talk about paying yourself first. And, and mm -hmm. some people really subscribe to that financially. Out of their paycheck, they put money away for emergencies and stuff before they pay their bills. And it's the same thing with our time. What we do, yeah. to, we tend to get up in the morning. And some of you, I am so in awe of all that you do with the kids and getting them ready and stuff. And then by the end of the day, you might eke yourself out two minutes, five minutes, or you're too exhausted to pay yourself with any time for yourself. Absolutely. So I definitely important. know that yeah. feeling. Yeah. And so it, even me, I mean, I, I, I have a lot of stuff going on and, and I need to learn at times. I have to stop myself and go, no, how am I paying me for doing everything that I do? Yeah. By giving yourself some attention, whether it's, whether it's, you know, taking a 10 minute break or even a yoga class or, you know, going to lift weights, if that's what you want to do or jog or walk with the dog or whatever it is, but giving you a chance to mentally and emotionally and spiritually 
have a break, pay some attention to yourself. And not at the end of the day when you're so exhausted that when you're trying to just think about something, you fall over in bed and wake up in the morning to start all over again. How do you see um, what happens to people when they're not paying attention? What does their life generally look like if we're not paying attention to ourselves? What happens? Frazzled. Uh, Mm -hmm. Some people get very anxious, uh, panic attacks or anxiety attacks. I mean, everybody likes to go to the extreme too, is I'm depressed or or I have anxiety. I respect those words, but let's reel it in. I'm sad and I'm stressed, right? So it's, it becomes one or the other because you're stuck in a pattern and you're not paying attention because we, we create our own lives. We, if we take responsibility for everything, we also take What's the word for it? Cause and effect. If we make other choices, we're responsible with the effect of those choices. So someone may have a high powered job making a lot of money and they say, you know what? I don't like this job. I'm just going to quit. Well, then they're not going to have the same income either. So you're, you're still responsible. You're responsible for what you receive, what you give, all of that kind of stuff. So instead of that, you go, okay, I am in a high powered job making a lot of money. How do I take pressure off of myself and give myself some attention with all that I do instead of giving it all away? Mothers. Oh my gosh, mothers, you're the best. You take care of one, two, three, four kids, the neighbor's kid, because you have to pick it up at school. You know, you're a mom. I know you're a mom. That little munchkin. Is he a year and a half or a year? Year and a half? You're munchkin. Yeah, he'll be 21. He'll be 21 months in a few yeah. days. So mothers juggle. And pay attention to everything. And then they have no time for themselves. And that really makes it difficult because a a phrase that I like to use is charity begins at home. And I always thought, oh, we help each other in the house when I was a kid, you know. And then you help the neighbors and stuff. But I realized it actually starts with you. So when you're solid, you're better for your kids or you're better for your family members or you're better at your work when you're good. Yeah. Right? For sure. I definitely so, notice as a mom, um, just on that example, when I'm frazzled and I'm tired or overwhelmed, overworked, I notice that my son's uh, behavior and just his temperament gets short. So the days when I'm much calmer and more even, things are running smoother and faster and we're enjoying each other. Right. So I, it's, it's really a part of the recipe of, of a good life is to pay attention to yourself. I mean, it's, it's simple, but it's a complicated practice because you really have to be present. Right. And if you are in demand of multiple things, you know, you're stretching yourself or you wear multiple hats, that could be such a very challenging um practice to pay attention to be present right and right. everyone to know that it, what we're talking about we understand that it's not easy but it is something that you can practice it's doable you just have right. to create it as part of your recipe of your life and and a lifestyle right right and what are some of the ways that you find when you're frazzled or you're having one of those days with your baby that you Mm -hmm. find a way to turn it? How do you Um, do I just, a lot of breathing. (laughs) I'm constantly, (laughs) I'm constantly checking my breath. I'm checking my, my self-talk. Right. Um, noticing my pace, my patience. Oh, once I recognize that my, patience is at its maximum that's when i know okay i need to slow down i need to breathe and go into that i mean this this is years of me practicing so i'm not saying that it's gonna just happen right away for you if this is new to you but um what i do is i do like a little prayer or meditation or i ask my angels to protect me to give me the strength to be patient that i need I need your guidance. I need to 
find that um, inner peace, that inner calm. And that will bring me down. And I find compassion in the situation. Right. I know for me, no, it, when I get mm -hmm. in that place, I look at all the things that I am trying to pay attention to during the day and say, okay, I'm always in the right place at the right time doing what I'm supposed to be doing and saying what I'm supposed to be saying. And I take that breath and I, that's my mantra. And I'm always in the right place at the right time doing what I'm supposed to be doing, saying what I'm supposed to be saying. And it stops me and going, okay, here's the list. And what will be done is what will be done. And, and it helps me to pay, because if it's true, what we're talking about, that the attention that we pay is the highest and our only commodity. Yeah. Then why can't we spend some of it on ourselves? Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. where, where I mean, that's the, the world would be much better if we paid attention to ourselves of finding self love and compassion. Now, there's this question, too, that pops up for me at times, and it helps stop me, is am I worthy of the attention to pay to myself? Mm -hmm. So I have to find my worthiness to be a little bit slower, a little bit more deliberate, or worthiness of, hey, yeah, I can take a break. I deserve this. If, if, not, if I don't give it to me, then who's going to? Yeah. Who's going to look after me better than me? And a lot of this in the work that I do with clients and stuff, I find is we're really just reparenting ourselves in many ways. Yeah, oh, yeah. From the things that we were told to pay attention to. No one mm -hmm. said pay attention to yourself. And yeah. at least when I grew up, it was, uh, I was also raised Catholic. Um, and the interesting thing I always, I, I came, I was thinking about not too long ago was if they had told me that God was, you know, they say you're a part of God, you're made in his image and stuff. But if they actually said, when you sin, it's not against God, it's against yourself. Yeah. It would have mm -hmm. made all the difference in my viewpoint. And maybe they Absolutely. did teach that and I just didn't get it at the time being seven and 12 yeah. and 13 and angst ridden and <laughs> pimple faced and, and, and what do they think? And why are people this, that, and the other, you know, cause we're also, oh, we worry about ourselves, <laughs> what other people think uh, about, but we don't worry yeah. about what they think about us. <laughs> yeah, no, that would have made a world of a difference for me too. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine if that God part in you, or however anybody wants to think about their spirituality, it's whatever I say, take it in your own context of God is in you or is a part of you or you are because everybody has different beliefs. So you're really sinning, quote unquote, sinning against yourself. You're doing harm is what I prefer to say to yourself. Not mm -hmm. to something that they say is a man with a beard or whatever religion someone has is outside of you. It's actually within you. Yeah. I like you, Bon, while I said that, isn't it? Ooh. <laughs> I have um, this special light that goes on and on. Okay. I, what, does it also make you blue? Because for a second, I thought I was seeing blue. But maybe maybe I'm becoming uh, clairvoyant and I can see your, your aura. <laughs> well, Patty has this argument all the time oh. with her kids. Patty, is that okay. argument about them uh, hurting themselves? Is that the part of the argu argument that you're talking about? She'll answer in a second, I'm sure. Yeah. I was just going to say, too, if anyone has a question, they want to comment, um, please comment hey, below. You know, also, too, um, if they want to talk to us after, meaning like if they're seeing this at a different time, they can always send us a message or a, um, you know, a note through Facebook or whatever, and, and I'm happy to answer then too. Yeah, you can put your information in the comments. Are you, do you see where it's at? Are you talking to me? Yes. Yeah, where I can chat. <laughs> but also, you know, but no, no, but also, you know, they can hit us up on Facebook because we're connected. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm just putting in. Um, oh, um, 
this whole part about Patty, I thought that was funny. Patty said, I have an argument with my kids all the time. So Patty, you're telling me, if I'm reading correctly on that comment, is that you are, um, no, they're not indicating any harm to themselves. They're not indicating any harm to them. I didn't get to read the whole thing. Do you see the whole thing? Yeah, I can see the oh, whole so thing. They're so let me. That they're um, harming themselves. They're looking at it as outside of them. She's like, I'm at work. What are you trying really to get quick. me in for? <laughs> <laughs> let me read it really quick. It says, I have this argument all the time with my children's father about the kids. He claims. They're not paying attention. I tell them all the time to be their own individuals. I preach to them to be kind, have courage, and always be brave. So when they speak up for what they feel is right or wrong, they're knocked down by their dad with the response of, you're just a child you don't know. I want to know how can I install these great characteristics in them. I want them to know they are their own individual, and it's okay to be their own individual at any age. How young is too young? They are 8 or 12. Oh, that's a great question. I was going to say, and those are great ages. So you're, so their dad loves them and is trying to keep them safe, right? And they don't know. He, he's, he only knows what he was taught, right? Yeah. And I she's think coming pretty, from that approach. Yeah, because oh, the ahead. dad loves the kids too. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing because otherwise he's, you know, he's ra helping to raise the kids and stuff. I don't know the situation, whether you're all together or apart, you know, whatever, but you know, he wouldn't do anything if he didn't care. So that's, he's looking at it from his perspective of how he was raised and how much introspection does he have? So you're trying to teach your kids to be brave and strong. So then that's right. So then he, they have to understand there's going to be people like their dad who loves them and has their own opinion. So that's how you get to teach your kids to be strong. Even though someone who loves them has a different opinion. No one, it's not a right or wrong situation. It was just an understanding because you, Patty, are doing the best you can. Your, their father's doing the best he can. The kids are all doing the best they know how. And as we grow and learn more, then we know how to do differently. It's not about judging where we've come from. It's trying to learn to move forward is how I would yeah. answer that. And so by you keep yeah. instilling that, one day someone's going to, at the school is going to say something and your kid's going to go, mm, that's not how I feel about it. To themselves, they may not say it out loud. And maybe one day they will say it out loud. It depends on who they are and what did they bring that they're supposed to learn in this lifetime to evolve. So you can only give them the tools, which you're doing great by I telling them to be brave and speak up and that sort of stuff. And then it's up to them when they choose to use it and learn it. I want to add to that too, Patty, that um, what this can also do is to help them get clear about who they are. Um, so th they may be challenged or may maybe you get challenged because of what he says back to them. And so it helps you to be stronger and for you to be clear on your guidance um, as well as your kids, they become clear. As now, what, what, I find, what so, the beliefs are or who they and, are as people. Sure. And if they don't agree, if people don't agree, no one has to always agree. So sometimes like if I'm, I'm going to use myself because I'm not in your situation. If I get upset by what someone says, I say, OK, look, am I taking this personally and why does it upset me? Because maybe they needed to speak their truth so that I would learn something new. Had they not spoken up, I wouldn't learn. You know, like sometimes we do things to be nice to somebody instead of speaking our truth, just to not mess the waters up, you know, not to, to, to aggravate anything. And what we're doing is doing a disservice to ourselves. And maybe they need to be shown something else so they can learn. We're keeping lessons from each other at times when we're hiding. If that makes sense to Absolutely. you. Yeah. No, that's, that's so true. That's, that's such a... It's an awareness. It's it's a growth that um, we all go through. Yeah. So she also says, "I'm worried about their self esteem." So yeah, this this is one way of giving them self esteem is to keep encouraging them to be brave and to be clear. Here's a perspective, Patty, that I don't have. You know, 
the all seeing eye, none of us do, but there's a perspective that people have is that we choose our parents, we choose our challenges to come here and move forward. For some people that they, they say, great, other people, I don't believe that, whatever. But let's give a perspective of that for a second. So if we have these parents that they have different perspectives and we have some self-esteem issues because you're worried about their self-esteem, maybe one of your kids is going to be really strong because they have parents that had a little bit different perspective from each other and them. Another one might be more timid, but maybe they learn something that further down the line, it's going to cause them to grow through it to be even stronger. So worrying is you're putting your attention to it, pay attention to it, but worrying is just going to bring that. If you can just pay attention to it and give them as much, see, because you're already doing the best you know how, right? And you're already doing what you think is right. And you can say, hey, your dad and I don't always agree. You're showing that people can still, I don't know again if y'all are together or not, but you can still raise children or if you are together, you can still love someone and not agree, like mom and daughter, or dad and son, or daughter and dad, and you know, and still get along. And that doesn't mean you have Absolutely. to give up your ideas to agree with them. It means I can get along with you even though we don't have the same ideas. And that's a big challenge right now for a lot of people, especially with the climate of political stuff and things that just because someone believes that way, I can't be their friend. Exactly. And, it's a, and it's a real challenge. There's some people that I was surprised at their belief system, but it doesn't mean I stopped loving them. I think it hurts more because it's someone that you love and you need to understand because from their point of view, they're right. And from our point of view or your point of view, you're right. So how do we see each other's point of view? And then it's about conversation to balance out or something. So your kids can see that and learn that from you guys, which may make it even better later on. Because they pay yeah. attention. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna become a lesson much bigger than, and than, than what you'll even know right now. That you're preparing these kids to grow up in a world that they, they can learn how to be confident um, Maybe not right now, but they're learning how to develop self-love and um, their own ways of being confident and, and strong. You know, and two, what I find interesting is like I have a lot of nieces and nephews and stuff. And I always like to ask, well, why do you think that way? Why do you think yeah. that way? So it allows me to understand them and they have to give me a reason, not just because or so-and-so else did it or whatever. To, I want to hear their reasoning so I can understand and say, well, if you think and give them another way, if, if I don't agree, give them another way to think about it, not try to change their mind, just give them another way, you know, and whether their dad does it or not, it doesn't matter because if he just says, hey, you know, your kids, you don't know, and you're the one saying, hey, explain to me why, then they know that there's always other people that are willing to listen and other people that aren't. And that's, exactly. a, truth. that's a truth in this world. And it might be a great lesson that they'll need. And you teach them to pay attention to why they believe this or not. Or, hey, you say, hey, um, I don't, your eight-year-old, now, this is what you're telling me you believe, but what if you paid attention to this part of the, your sentence or this part of what you're thinking and take it further? So it's about giving them time. And Patty, you, I hopefully, because you're here giving time to yourself, listening to us, and we're giving you time and paying attention to you. Hopefully, you'll take time afterwards every day to give yourself some attention and grow from that because we're, you know, it's all about what we're paying attention to. What are you, what is your, what is your, what is the father of the kids doing that's great? I'm kind of curious. What does he do that's really great? So, I know that you're worried about the self-esteem, but what's all the good stuff that's happening too? And if we pay attention to that to help balance out this learning experience. Yeah. One thing that I learned a few years back was um, focusing on the things that you do want versus what you don't want. At so paying that. attention to the things that you do want. Yeah, because you when you pay attention to what yeah. you don't want, like, I don't want this job, or I don't want that. I, oh, here's a list. I don't want to date anybody that's this, 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 and this. And that's all that keeps showing up. This, 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 and this, because oh, you're yeah. paying attention to it. 
if you if you flip it and say, I want people that have this, 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 and this, it's a forward movement to get what you want. Exactly. Attention to what you want, not what you don't. You can't get what you don't want. It's going to come to you. I mean, you'll get what you don't want because it doesn't hear. It's not about don't. It's putting energy in the things you don't want brings it to you. Paying attention to the things you don't want brings the things you don't want. Paying attention to the things that you want helps take you closer to the things that you want. Absolutely. <laughs> now that's that's an, a nice, easy practice to to get uh, as as part of your lifestyle if you're not doing it already. So uh -huh. I know from personal experience, making that shift years ago about paying attention to the things I want versus what I don't want yeah. helps me to take charge of my life instead of being a victim or victimizing myself or keep making people responsible for my life when they're not responsible for my life. I am. So right. that's, that's my two cents. And that's my, that's one <laughs> of the easiest things is whenever I talk about, or it comes to my mind, Oh, I don't want that. That's not what I want. And I stop myself. Well, what do I want then? Flip yeah. it. Oh, I don't want to live, blah, blah, blah. Okay, where do you want to live? Or, oh, I don't like that person. Okay, what do you like about them? Or what do you need from other people if you don't like the group that you're with? Or what is it you need? It's, we, it's, I, I kind of, I, I, I'm such in a small space and I'm a very animated person. But I think of, I know. We, I know. I think of, I'm going to try to do this in a small way. I try to think of what we need is going this way, forward or up, and what we don't want is staying back, right? So we can't grab what we don't want to, to move forward. You have to let go of you have to let go of what you don't want, and ask for what you want to pull you forward. Does that make sense? Could you see all of that action? <laughs> <laughs> You might have to slow down. <laughs> okay, I'll slow down. So well, think about I have to re rewind that part. <laughs> okay, so what I'm saying is when you want something, it's moving forward. Right? To me, this is my... Yeah. And when I don't want something, it's behind me. So if I keep saying about what I don't want, I can't drag that with me. It's dragging me down from the back. But growing forward movement for me is what I want. So I have to let go of what's holding me down and dragging me back. So if I say, oh, I don't want to eat here. That's kind of silly, but I don't want to eat. I don't want Chinese food. Well, what do you want? Let go of that problem and think about the solution, which is forward. Or, you know, I'm tired of not being fit. I want to be fit. So what do you want to do to be fit? It's about solution, exactly. right? Yeah, instead of holding on and paying attention to what you don't want. Don't do that if you can. Pay attention to what you want. That's right, that's right. Or hey, almost out of time, Greg, is there any other quick- Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking for a while. Yeah, whoever, thanks for hanging in, and I hope you enjoy our soulful yes. nooner. <laughs> our soulful nooner. I'm gonna type that in there. <laughs> soul nooner. Yay! Um, Yay! Okay. Thanks for. So, um, I'm glad we get to do this. Me too. Um, and we will do this. I'm not sure how often this is but our we're gonna first do time. It. We're going to talk about other stuff. Oh, there's there's a comment. Yeah, tell me what Patty says. Says dad and I are divorced. They have learned to keep conversations things to a minimum when visiting dad. They do this to avoid getting in trouble and having personal items taken away because of this. Dad wants 10-year-old tested for special ed. He thinks he has autism. Oh, you're welcome, Patty. Um, Asperger's. He doesn't, to be honest. Ten-year-old keeps quiet because he knows that when he tries to be his own individual, he gets in trouble. Well, just a few yeah. more years of that. <laughs> so hopefully he'll learn how to find him, right? He's protecting himself. Teaching him tolerance. Teaching, Teaching him, him paying attention to tolerance. Right. 
right. you know, in the mind and how to practice tolerance that that difference of uh, uh, how to blossom parenting. how to blossom with restrictions within yeah so you have boundaries how do you blossom within it you know how do you make the, how do you find a solution what's a solution i know that these aren't answers necessarily but that's how i think when i'm like okay here's my parameters how do i get what i need within the parameters so it's solutions problem solving so that'll be great you know even i know it's hard with your parents and stuff and you know moms and dads yeah. together but you know that's the reality and so, how do you work with the reality you know and and the dad can think that he has a certain type but unless he is a professional understands these types of diagnosis these are serious uh diagnosis and um take it to the professionals to make that right. judgment that decision and try not to personalize it try not to take it in um because again that is a lesson there's something about this situation that is calling for you to really pay attention maybe your own tolerance maybe your own patience um it's maybe showing you how much you really love your kids um, so focusing on things that strengthen you and make you wiser out of this and use all your resources that you have to um, help you in these times. Yeah. So we're thanks for tuning in, whether it's live or later. And, yeah, uh, exactly. We're looking forward to another soulful noon or sooner than later. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. All right. So if you want to reach Greg or if you'd like to have a session with him or you do, what are you up to these days? Um, <laughs> that the 10 year old doesn't have a problem uh, with communication ever. Oh, that's great. That's good. Oh, you're awesome. Too. Thanks. Um, Patty. Um, what am I up to? Uh, taking more clients, um, teaching a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be having um, a, I believe, a four agreements class coming up soon in LA or online. I haven't decided yet, but the more people have interest, the quicker you know I get things going. I pay more attention to it, and uh, yeah. So awesome. feel free to contact me. And um, let me see. I am going to hide this. Wait, let me show you. I'm going to hide me. Okay. And uh, do you have a website or something? And I can type it in. What's your website? Or do uh, you want people to go to your website? Where hypnosis, do you want people to go? HypnosisLA.com. All one word, HypnosisLA.com. Dot com. Mm -hmm. That's a www. Yeah, of course. HypnosisLA. <laughs> HypnosisLA.com. So that's, that's there you go. <laughs> so if you want to contact Greg or learn more about him, just go to his website. And in case you want to learn about moi, me, then uh, you could go to my website and it's koshawellness.com. And if you would like to sign up for my uh, weekly sacred sound meditations, uh, you can join my mailing list and um, I talk about how to use sound healing in your life to make it easier and how to relax and find. And something that's coming up in a couple months is I'm gonna be starting uh, another venture into my online program. It's called Bad Boy Detox. So if you're a single woman or you're just uh, starting out in a relationship, and you're looking for a holistic way to uh, detox and release from old love wounds, I'd love for you to join. Um, you can find some information uh, by going to my website. And if you have any questions, my email is in the comments below. Otherwise, that's it on my end. Anything else? Before no. we stop? I'm appreciative uh, for being here. and. 
I look forward to doing more. Yay. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Bye.